and along with the mapping, the idea of taking them on trips that, that, that reinforce what they're learning two-dimensionally. There's a living museum uh, along the Hudson River called Phillipsburg Manor, and it interprets uh, colonial New York history from an enslaved person's perspective. So we thought of like taking the, the train up oh, along the Hudson. More. You get to see the width of the Hudson. You see the Palisades on the New Jersey side. You can see that there are hills on the New York side. So that there's stuff you can see to like, oh right, that's a river. And there's a really long bridge going over that river, a couple of them. And, and also even when we got there, there are like sort of um, culverts where you see that the go underneath the, the sidewalks, I mean, you can actually tell that there was water under there, you know, and, and when you look at these huge expanses of land, except for Central Park, we don't really have huge expanses of land. Right, and all our so, rivers are, yeah. all the rivers that are on these, these yeah. British headquarter maps are all gone. That's, I, I think that when you, when you um, do tie <coughs> together the, these 3D models, and you actually have them make their own maps, and you have them take the trips, and then tie in the history that goes with it, it gives a much better experience than, than just trying to read a, uh, a standard text, which really is what people failed with. And, and because of this previous failure, I think teachers shied away. And now we're really giving alternatives to, to, um, to texts, which are much better.